Hi, everybody. This is Rob Swatsky from the York campus of Hack, and in this podcast, we'll review capillary exchange. Capillary exchange is the transfer of chemical materials between the blood and the interstitial fluid. This exchange is carried out through three processes, diffusion, transcytosis, and bulk flow. Simple diffusion is the most important method of capillary exchange, used to transfer many chemical substances and solutes, such as the respiratory gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide, nutrients such as glucose and amino acids, and the endocrine hormones and other solutes. Chemicals found in higher concentrations in the blood, like oxygen and nutrients, diffuse down their concentration gradients from higher to lower concentration, leave the blood, enter the interstitial fluid, and then move into the body's tissue cells. The tissue cells contain higher concentrations of carbon dioxide and wastes, which are released into the interstitial fluid and then diffuse into the blood where they're found in lower concentrations. The capillaries make diffusion possible because they have thin walls consisting of a single layer of endothelium. They also have gaps between endothelial cells called intercellular clefts and pores in the plasma membrane called fenestrations. Chemicals that are soluble in water move through the capillaries, intracellular clefts, and fenestrations, while lipid-soluble chemicals, including oxygen, carbon dioxide, and the steroid hormones, are transported directly across the plasma membrane of the endothelial cells. Larger chemicals, like plasma proteins and red blood cells, are too big to pass across the walls of continuous and fenestrated capillaries or through their clefts and fenestrations. These chemicals are more easily transferred in sinusoids, such as those found in the liver and red bone marrow, due to the presence of large intercellular clefts in their vessel walls. The brain contains capillaries that are just the opposite of sinusoids, preventing most chemicals from being exchanged through their walls. These capillaries form what is called the blood-brain barrier, also known for short as the triple B, and consist of continuous capillaries that have tight junctions that form seals in between the endothelial cells. Only a few areas of the brain have regular capillary exchange, such as the pituitary gland, pineal gland, and the hypothalamus. Transcytosis is a method of transport used to transfer large, lipid, insoluble chemicals, including the protein hormone insulin and some antibodies, that have a difficult time moving across capillary walls due to their size. In transcytosis, endothelial cells take in chemicals through vesicular transport mechanisms, including endocytosis. Then they enclose these chemicals within their vesicles, transport them through the cell, and then release them out the other side via exocytosis. Bulk flow is a method of transporting large quantities of chemicals, including ions, together in the same direction. Diffusion by itself can be a slow process, but by transporting chemicals in large amounts, rates of diffusion can increase. The reason is because bulk flow relies on pressure differences, where substances are transported down a pressure gradient from an area of higher pressure to an area of lower pressure. Bulk flow plays an important role in the regulation of the relative volumes of blood and interstitial fluid. There are two components to bulk flow, filtration and reabsorption. Filtration is the transport of solutes 
and fluid out of the blood capillaries and into the interstitial fluid through a difference in pressures. Reabsorption is the opposite movement, transporting substances via pressure difference from the interstitial fluid into the blood capillaries. There are two pressures that promote filtration, blood hydrostatic pressure, or BHP, which is the pressure produced as a result of the heart's contraction, and interstitial fluid osmotic pressure, also called IFOP, IFOP. Reabsorption of fluid is promoted mainly by blood colloid osmotic pressure, or BCOP. Net filtration pressure, or NFP, is the overall result of the interaction of the two forces, filtration and reabsorption, respectively, and indicates whether or not blood volume or interstitial fluid volume will change or stay the same. In normal circumstances, the volume of solids and fluid reabsorbed is approximately the same as the volume that is filtered. This balance is called Starling's Law of the Capillaries. Blood hydrostatic pressure, or BHP, is the result of the pressure of the water in blood plasma against the blood vessel walls. The term hydrostatic refers to water pressure. Think of it as similar to the water pressure inside a garden hose that has been turned on. At the arterial end of a capillary bed, where blood is entering the capillaries, the BHP is around 35 millimeters of mercury in pressure, while at the venous end, the BHP is around 16 millimeters of mercury. The higher BHP entering the capillary bed is able to push fluid out of the capillaries and into the interstitial fluid. Think of this with our garden hose analogy, but now with the hose punctured by tiny holes. The water escaping the hose through the holes is like the fluid being filtered out of the capillary. The opposing force to the BHP is called the interstitial fluid hydrostatic pressure, or IFHP, which pushes fluid back into the capillaries from the interstitial spaces between tissue cells. The IFHP is a very weak pressure force and is often close to zero millimeters of mercury in pressure throughout the entire capillary bed region, which is what we'll assume for this overview. The large proteins in the blood plasma are too big to leave the capillaries, and collectively they generate a counterforce called blood colloid osmotic pressure, or BCOP. Osmotic pressure is the force created by the tendency of water to move across a selectively permeable membrane toward a solution with a higher concentration of large solutes, usually proteins, that are too big to pass through the membrane. The larger the solute concentration, the larger the osmotic pressure. This pressure is around 26 millimeters of mercury, and does not change much throughout the entire length of the capillary bed. This helps to pull fluid into the capillaries from the surrounding interstitial fluid. The opposing force to BCOP is IFOP, which is the interstitial fluid osmotic pressure, a pressure generated by proteins in the interstitial fluid. It works to pull fluid out of the blood and into the interstitial fluid. IFOP is usually a small value from 0.1 to 5 millimeters of mercury due to the small concentration of protein in the interstitial fluid. We'll assume a value of 1 millimeter of mercury for this overview. Any protein that happens to leak out of the capillaries is often quickly drained out of the interstitial fluid and into the lymphatic system where it is then returned back to the blood. 
The interactions of all of these various pressures dictates whether or not fluid will enter or leave the capillaries. Fluid will be pushed out of the capillaries and into the interstitial fluid during filtration if the filtration pressures are higher than the reabsorption pressures. And the reverse is true if the pressures that promote reabsorption are higher than the pressures that promote filtration more fluid will then enter the capillaries. We can determine the overall direction of fluid movement by calculating the net filtration pressure. This can be calculated through the following equation. We can add together the blood hydrostatic pressure with the interstitial fluid osmotic pressure. These are the pressures that are promoting filtration and subtract that number from the pressures that promote reabsorption, the BCOP, the blood colloid osmotic pressure, and the interstitial fluid hydrostatic pressure. At the capillary bed's arterial end, the net filtration pressure is around 10 millimeters of mercury, which is the net outward pressure that promotes filtration out of the capillary and into the interstitial fluid. Under normal circumstances, BHP is equal to 35 and IFOP is equal to 1 millimeter of mercury in pressure for a total filtration pressure of 36, while BCOP is equal to 26 and IFHP is equal to zero millimeters of mercury for a total reabsorption pressure of 26 millimeters of mercury. The difference between 36 and 26 is equal to 10 millimeters of mercury in pressure. This filtering of the blood plasma is the only way that the body can generate interstitial fluid. At the venule end of the capillary bed, the net filtration pressure is equal to negative 9 millimeters of mercury. This is the net inward pressure that promotes reabsorption of fluid into the capillary from the interstitial fluid. Under normal circumstances, BHP is equal to 16 and IFOP is equal to one millimeter mercury for a total filtration pressure of 17, while BCOP is equal to 26, and again, IFHP is equal to zero millimeters of mercury for a total reabsorption pressure of 26 millimeters of mercury. The difference between 17 and 26 millimeters of mercury is negative 9. Most of the fluid that leaves the capillaries during filtration, approximately 85% of it, is reabsorbed back into the capillaries from the interstitial fluid. The excess fluid that is filtered and any lost proteins moves from the interstitial fluid into the lymphatic capillaries and then returns back into the venous circulation. There is a daily average of 20 liters of fluid that is filtered out of the capillaries throughout the body's tissues. Of this 20 liters, 17 liters are reabsorbed into the blood and 3 liters are taken into the lymphatic capillaries. Edema is a condition where filtration is higher than reabsorption, which leads to a significant increase in the volume of interstitial fluid. It is caused by excess filtration or poor reabsorption. Excess filtration can be due to a higher capillary blood pressure, which forces more fluid to be filtered out of the capillaries, or it's due to a higher permeability of the capillaries that allows some plasma proteins to leak out of the blood. Poor reabsorption can be due to lower concentrations of plasma proteins due to low synthesis, poor diet, malnutrition, liver disease, or burns. This low concentration of proteins will reduce the BCOP, 
the blood colloid osmotic pressure, which may then lead to decreased reabsorption. 